My name is John Fisher. I'm Director of Student Services at Ohio University Chillicothe. And the purpose of this presentation is to give you a brief overview of the College Credit Plus program in the state of Ohio in general and the College Credit Plus program at Ohio University Chillicothe more specifically. Hopefully, this uh, presentation should serve as your information night for College Credit Plus. Uh, the first slide simply has our contact information, phone number, and the website for our College Credit Plus program where you can go to get more information about the program and also to access documents that you will need like the application and the application instructions. This slide is simply a summary of what I plan to speak about for a few minutes. First, we're going to talk about the program intent. Next, we're going to talk about options, uh, enrollment definitions. We're going to talk about the risk and rewards of the program. And finally, we're going to talk about how you apply and how you become eligible, application procedures and eligible. So what is the College Credit Plus program? The state of Ohio mandates that high schools and institutions of higher learning cooperate in offering secondary school students the opportunity to enroll in college level coursework prior to graduation from high school. This is an opportunity for you to earn both high school and college credit and begin working on a college degree early. There are two registration options, A and B. By registering for classes under option A of the College Credit Plus program at Ohio University, you pay tuition and fees. By registering for classes under option B, which most students choose to do, the cost of tuition, textbooks, materials, and fees are paid for the student by your school district. Make sure you choose the correct option on the application. Enrollment definitions and restrictions. In high school, you have units. In college, we have semester hours. One high school unit equals three semester hours. So for example, let's say you need an English class or an English unit in high school. You enroll in our introductory English class English 1510, which is a three semester hour class. That gives you three semester hours of college credit and meets your requirement for a high school English unit. You may not take more than 30 college credit hours per academic year and not more than 120 college credit hours while in the program. 30 college credit hours per academic year is basically what a full-time college student takes. So that would be 15 hours in the fall semester, 15 hours in the spring semester. At Ohio University, it takes about 120 college credit hours to get a bachelor's degree or a four-year degree. So in theory, you can get a four-year college degree in this program. Remember, College Credit Plus will not pay for your enrollment in developmental classes. So here's a chart that tries to give you an explanation of these enrollment definitions and restrictions. We've got the number of high school credits per year. We've, we multiply a high school credit times three, and then we subtract whatever we get from 30, which is the maximum amount, amount of hours that you can take in a year. And that provides us with the number of college credits that you can take per year. The idea is there has to be some balance between what you're doing in high school and what you're doing in College Credit Plus. You can't over enroll in classes. So let's take that top line. Let's say that you're taking two high school credits. We're going to multiply that two times three for college credit hours. Uh, and we're going to come up with six. So you're enrolled in a, a, a six college credit hours. Uh, basically, that's your equivalency for your high school units. We're going to subtract that six from the maximum that you can take in College Credit Plus semester hours, which is 30. 
and that's going to give us 24 uh, college credits uh, hours that you can take that academic year. This is something that you need to work closely with your high school counselor and with your advisor at whatever college you attend who advises College Credit Plus students. Let's talk a minute about potential risk. The state likes for us to make sure that you understand what potential risks are in this program. First, students who participate initiate a permanent academic record that will follow them to any other college or university. So when you begin College Credit Plus, you're beginning your college record. And whatever you earn in this program is going to be on your transcript and follow you. Earning poor grades could negatively impact a participant's eligibility for admission at Ohio University or at other universities as a degree-seeking student. Students who fail or withdraw from courses may be asked by their school districts for reimbursement of the cost of tuition and books. And I will assure you that you will be asked for reimbursement of the cost of tuition and books if you fail or if you withdraw from College Credit Plus courses. Other risk, although certain courses are guaranteed to transfer to other Ohio public institutions, they may not be accepted at private and out-of-state institutions. When you begin in the College Credit Plus program, as an incoming student, you take what are referred to as Level 1 courses, which are all in what is known as the Ohio Transfer Module, OTM. Those classes are guaranteed to transfer to any state uh, school in Ohio. So if you're planning on going to Ohio State University or the University of Cincinnati or the University of Akron or Southern State Community College, state schools, those level one OTM credits will transfer. But if you're gonna go out of state or if you're gonna go to a private school like Wilmington College or Cedarville, there's no guarantee. You have to check with them. Financial aid eligibility as a degree seeking student is based on degree completion within a certain time period. Course credits earned through the College Credit Plus program will count in determining eligibility. So when you do graduate from high school and you go to college, if you are using financial aid to go to college, you have a certain amount of time that you uh, have to graduate within in order to be funded by financial aid. The college credits that you earn in College Credit Plus apply to that time uh, ceiling. So it may affect your financial aid in that regard. But remember, the classes are free now, so it's worth it in the long run. College courses are designed for mature audiences and may be academically and socially challenging for some students. There's a chance these classes may be more difficult than, chance, than classes that you're taking in high school. The standard rule of thumb in college is that for every credit hour that you're in class, you should spend two hours in homework or preparation time. So if you're taking 15 credit hours of classes, that means you're in class 13, 15 hours a week, and that means you should be prepared to study 30 hours a week for those classes. Additionally, uh, topics covered in college classes in the College Credit Plus program could have more mature themes than you would have in high school classes uh, and you will have to be prepared for that. Additionally, not all college courses will satisfy high school graduation requirements. You've got to make sure that the English class that you're taking at college satisfies the English requirement that you need in high school, or the math class satisfies the math requirement that you need. Students must, we say encourage are encouraged but you must work closely with your secondary school counselors 
and your advisors in the College Credit Plus program to make sure that your schedule satisfies all the academic and extracurricular goals that you have. Also, uh, in the environment that we're in today, much more work is being done remotely and online. So you need to ensure that you have access to the appropriate computer and internet, internet technology. Lack of access may prevent you from completing assignments and participating in online and remote course discussions, which could negatively impact your grades. So make sure you have the technology that you need. Rewards. Earn high school and college credit at the same time. Great deal. Free college now. Reduce time to and expense for your college degree after high school. Experience college early to understand the expectations of college life and have access to university resources to supplement the resources that you have in high school. Well, let's talk a little bit about application procedures. If you want to apply for the College Credit Plus program at Ohio University Chillicothe, you must submit the following materials. The College Credit Plus application for admission completed in full. Uh, an official transcript from your high school. For students who do not have a transcript, please submit your latest grade report. Official ACT scores if you took the ACT or SAT scores if you took it. Official transcripts of any coursework completed at any other post-secondary institution. For example, you may have taken College Credit Plus classes at another school, and now you want to take uh, College Credit Plus classes with us, so send us the transcript from that other school. And then if you've done any advanced placement, we need that as well. Application deadline information at Ohio University Chillicothe. Application and high school transcript must be received or postmarked by April 1st for summer admission, May 1st for fall admission, or November 1st for spring admission. No exceptions to that deadline. Academic eligibility at OUC. So you apply and you want to find out if you're eligible. Ad admission to the program will be offered if you are remediation free in English and reading. In other words, if you test college ready in English and reading. On the AccuPlacer test, uh, English, we need a score of 88 or higher on sentence skills or a score of 5 plus on right placer and a reading score of 80 or higher. ACT, we need an English of uh, score of 18 or higher, a reading score of 22 or higher. SAT, we need an English score of 40, 480 or higher and a reading score of 480 or higher. These scores, English and reading, get you admitted to the program. You can now take classes that uh, do not have math prerequisites, history classes, English classes, political science classes, sociology classes, classes like this. However, if you wish to enroll in a math course or any course with a math requisite, you must be remediation free in math also. On the AccuPlacer test, you have to have a math placement level of one or above. On the ACT, you have to have a 20 math score or higher. And on the SAT, you have to have a 520 or higher. If you want to take college math classes or any college classes that have a college uh, a math prerequisite, uh, you're going to have to be able to take uh, college math to uh, meet that prerequisite. And in order to take college math, you have to have these scores. And the the college classes that have math prerequisites are many times in the sciences or in economics and areas like that. ACT and SAT scores can only be used for placement purposes if the test was taken within the past two years. All placement 
test scores must see, be submitted by the testing deadline, which for summer and fall is June 5th, and for spring is yet to be determined. Accuplace or placement testing. So you may have ACT scores, you may have SAT scores, and you may not need to take the Accuplace or placement test. But if you don't have ACT or SAT scores, you will need to take the Accuplacer placement test. And to schedule the Accuplacer placement test, we need you to email the testing center coordinator, Mary Basham, at bashamm at ohio.edu. Right now, all testing is remote and will be conducted over a Zoom session. Testing takes approximately two hours. You must schedule at least 24 hours in advance and a photo ID is required. All College Credit Plus testing is standardized. Uh, our guidelines are that you may take the Accuplacer test at OUC after applying to the program. So you need to have decided that you're going to apply. You need to submit your intent to participate form to your high school. You need to take the Accuplacer test. Uh, you need to apply to Ohio University Chillicothe. You need to take the Accuplacer test at Ohio University Chillicothe after applying to the program. If you pass, you qualify for the program immediately. You only have one opportunity to take the placement test. If you've previously applied to the College Credit Plus program, but failed to meet all the requirements, you are expected to take the test and meet the criteria for the new year. Once you're accepted, so now you've turned in your intent to participate form, you've applied, you've either submitted ACT or SAT scores or taken a placement test, and you've been accepted. What do you do next? If you're admitted, you must complete an orientation. That's the next step. And you must have a parent or legal guardian present with you. You'll be notified of the orientation session via email. And at orientation, you will learn more about College Credit Plus and how to register for courses. We're on the semester system at Ohio University, all campuses of Ohio University. That's 14 weeks of classes and one week of exams. The fall semester from the end of August to mid-December. Spring semester, mid-January to the beginning of May. We have a full summer semester, mid-May to mid-August, and then we also have a first summer session, which is mid-May to the end of June, and a second summer session, which is the end of June to mid-August. How do you maintain eligibility at OU Chillicothe once you're in the program? You must maintain at least a 2.0 or C accumulative grade point average to remain in good academic standing. If your GPA falls below a 2.0, this may affect your eligibility to enroll and attend classes on any OU campus after graduation. If you fail or withdraw after the roster date from a college course, you are liable to pay for the classes that you have not successfully completed. Remember, we mentioned that before. This decision lies in the hands of your school district. In conclusion, I want to say this. Uh, we have kind of a typical OUC student from an academic standpoint. And you think about this, uh, we have very few middle school students in this program, although they can participate. Our students are high school students, and usually we're looking more at sophomores, juniors, and seniors, but freshmen also. What students find out is that um, if they're going to participate in this program as freshmen, sophomores, and juniors, they have competing obligations. They have classes that they need to take at the high school. They have extracurricular activities that they're involved in, band, 
uh, sports, other student clubs and activities, maybe a part-time job. And what usually happens is they, they see, yeah, I can take one or two college classes and then I can take, I'll have to take classes at my high school and do these other things. So the typical student is a part-time college student and a part-time high school student. Now, a lot of good high school students, they finish up their graduation requirements by the end of their junior year. And then uh, we see more of a transition into a full-time college student on the part of these students who have finished up their high school graduation requirements by the end of their junior year. And now in their senior year, they can go to the college for 15 hours per semester. And they end up, when they graduate from high school, uh, not only as a high school graduate, but maybe well into their sophomore year of college uh, and on their way uh, when they leave high school to getting their four-year college degree two years after they've left high school or three years after they've left high school. This saves them a lot of time. This saves them a lot of money. This is the, one of the real benefits to this program. I want to conclude by just giving you some contact information. Uh, me, I'm John Fisher. I'm Director of Student Services. You can see my phone number there and my email address. I'm also an advisor for College Credit Plus students. If you would like to contact me with any questions, you're welcome to do that. I suggest that you email me now because we are working remotely quite a bit. We're not in the offices as much as we would be in normal times. And then also Beth Barnes is also an advisor and a College Credit Plus advisor and her phone number and uh, email contact information are, list, are listed there as well and you're welcome to contact her. I would like to say good luck to you in the future going forward, and I appreciate you listening and hope this was helpful. Bye.